Hey, welcome to the Social 333 Podcast. I'm your host, Chris Bentley. Today, my guest is Kira Azam. Kira, how are you? I'm great. How are you? Awesome. Tell the audience a little bit about yourself and what you got going on. Well, first of all, I would just like to thank you for having me on the show, Um, especially since showing up. This is definitely the best uh, production value of anything I've ever attended. So I appreciate being here. And um, yeah, a bit about myself. I am a software developer from Canada and uh, and I own a ticketing company that uh, does any kind of tickets, uh, ticketed software that you'd need. We started out when I lost my job. It was in the middle of the pandemic, and I had always thought my job was pretty secure because I worked in like an essential part of the software. But the company decided to let go of all the Canadians, just the whole team, uh, because they're a British company. Mm. So they were like, let's just cut out the whole Canadian team. Um, So I suddenly, very shockingly, at least to me, had no job. And, uh, And then my friend said... I have a great app idea. I'm going to like, let's go out to lunch and I'll tell you about my app idea. And anyone who owns a business or is in software hates that sentence (laughs) because, you know, then you have to sit, you have to listen, you have to nod and be like, yeah, I could see how that could work. And in your head, you're thinking this is a horrible idea. Um, Anyways, in this case, it was a good idea. So I went out to lunch with her and she said, hey, right now she's a professional dancer. She said right now at competitions, we're using, um, gymnastics software can you build something for dance specifically so uh, yeah I I, I can build that so we built it out and it was doing well and then all of a sudden people started requesting different things where they were saying can we do different types of sports can we do um, you know studio software studio management and then at some point I realized hey we also as a subset of running competitions we just sell tickets right so I'm like, why not throw that out there as a competitor to big, bigger ticketing companies like Eventbrite and just make it dirt cheap because I already built it. Yeah, kind of like I hear you go world. It doesn't don't care too much if we make money off of that. And it's more just to give people an alternative. And and then here I am. So we have a team of 100 percent developers. We have no marketing, no sales, and we rely entirely on like word of mouth and we do attend a few like sports conventions things like that it's really really interesting so eventist on the name of your company i was just kind of thinking so i was in metro capital and like i'd hear a lot of those pitches and it would be like yeah i got this great idea like we're gonna make like hair ties or hair clips and i would be like cool or i go to a networking event and like somebody would be like yeah like what do you do and they'd be like oh like I do hair clips. I saw hair clips and I'd be like, oh, cool. Like a hair clip. You know, I need a hair clip. Right. <laughs> so like, I mean, like I'm obviously talking to the wrong person, um, but this is really cool. A really great idea. So you have the company and like one of the direct competitors is obviously Eventbrite. Right. So obviously they charge a certain amount of money per, cause I've used them before for networking events. Yeah. And then you guys are like, kind of like, okay, well this is a less fee kind of situation yeah like if you think about eventbrite as a concept all they really do is sell a ticket and then you show up at the door with your ticket and they have ticket scanning that's really they they do have a couple other things but for the bulk of it that's that's what they do and they charge like five percent plus um additional fees on top of that um like flat fees so in canada it's two dollars canadian um so we just charge a flat fee of 25 cents canadian per ticket sold no percentage Wow. So you can have a $300 concert ticket and it's 25 cents. Wow. And that's the portion of the business that, again, doesn't really make money. But I, it, I guess you could say it's altruistic. Like I, I go to sleep feeling like, hey, at least we're not scamming people. Right, <laughs> so, ripping people off, right? Yeah. So what's the other parts of the business? Like the other what? parts are the competition stuff. Okay. So that is the stuff that does make money. So if you think about even like my little sister's much younger than I am. And uh, I would go to her soccer competitions recently and they would just have a schedule posted like on a on a board somewhere, like paper printed out. And and that was their system. Um, So a lot of these sports just have no scheduling systems. They have nothing to do it. So that's why we built a really versatile platform so that people can go and and run their sports online. So you buy a ticket, you get a copy of your schedule. Everyone can see the live scorings. The referees can put in scores. Um, so it started in dance, but we kind of expanded horizontally into other sports as people request. So if someone says, hey, can you build us a rule set for this new sport? We'll build it out. And um, 
if you'd like, I'll train. If it's a solo sport, I'll, I'll practice. And I'll, if it's within budget, I'll come to the competition and compete and place last. Mm. And I've been doing that for a couple different sports. So in November, I'm going to be at the National Arm Wrestling Competition in Canada. Right. And I'm going to hopefully not break an arm. That's, that's the goal. <laughs> so, Like underwater basket weaving. Um, <laughs> how... So this is really interesting. So when I played high school football, believe it or not, I actually did. Um, I played left bench, ha, 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 right? Um, but in all seriousness, like when I did play, it would be like coach would be like, hey, uh, you know, we're playing tomorrow night at, you know, five o'clock, be here at four to, you know, we have to do whatever and then get prepared and sit in the locker room and then we have different meetings and stuff. And then we play ball at, or we go out run on the field and stretch and run back in. It was like a whole production, but we started at five and it would always be like a computer sheet. Or it would just be like a printout. And then it'd be like, here you go. Like, you know, show up at five. So now it's gotten to be a little more, obviously more organized than what it was when I would play football. Like people actually knew like to show up cause I didn't know to show up unless they told me <laughs> or, uh, I don't know how other people knew to show up outside of like, you know, the people that showed up for, you know, friends and family kind of deal. So how has that now like changed with a lot of the stuff that you've kind of integrated? People can buy tickets or like they can see the schedule and you said there's like points and stuff too. So yeah. they can go online and kind of see what's going on and exactly. follow the action. Yeah. So you can, so there is a live portal where people can see like stats as they happen live. And obviously that exists in football for like major leagues, right? You can watch it on TV and see the, scores live so they obviously have some kind of software there but for smaller leagues like regular groups and leagues like uh like what is it called like local local sports that doesn't that like you said it's all pen and paper right now even the refs they still use still, carbon paper wow. yeah like they and then they bring a carbon paper they give one sheet to one team one sheet to the other team and then the third sheet they give to the league so um, they're really kind of stuck in the past. So the idea is here, yeah, you sign up, you build a competition, you assign referees, everyone gets a copy of where they need to be when, and then you have the live stuff. So if it's even if your schedule is behind schedule, all of your participants can see that. So it's just, you know, kind of moving it to the present day. Yeah. Inside my mind, I'm kind of thinking about ticket scalping, like I'm sure there's a way or somebody that's probably like interested, you know, we have entrepreneurs, small business owners that watch a show that is thinking to themselves like, hey, look, like I can go out and buy, probably wouldn't even say the names, but let's say a Mavs tickets or whatever, mm -hmm. buy blocks of it, turn around and flip them on your site, not have to pay the huge fee that I would pay if I was doing like a, where do they go for the, to, to buy used uh, things now um not ticket well you can go on ticket master but you can go on other ones now where yeah. they have like sports events and stuff and concerts like that would be like a really big i'm just thinking because i like to make money um a really big way of like you know expanding your business is by doing that we have actually protections against that really yeah okay. so if you resell you can only resell it at the same price you bought it for and because of credit card fees, you actually lose money. So it really discourages, like not a huge amount, but, you know, right. credit card fees are 2.9% plus 30 cents. So you're going to lose that if you resell a ticket. So it, it discourages you from reselling and scalping. That said, we can't stop someone from doing it on a separate platform mm. um, if they wanted to. Yeah. That's really interesting. I would not be surprised if I talk to you in the next couple of years and you're like, I sold it to like a company that does something like that because i could see somebody coming in with a lot of money and being like you know what this is a great idea you know they're starting out it's very much like a grassroots situation and all i need to do is like turn the switch on but i think they would underestimate how much i like sitting at home and programming what i want to program and having <laughs> no one tell me what to do you know like i really that's enjoy really cool. it yeah it's really really cool do you do anything else uh outside of that like do you create other apps anything like that um no i'm i still actually work full time i work for yeah. uh synopsis cool. which uh or i worked for ansys and synopsis recently acquired ansys um, as a software developer, so I've been building this on the side, and we have five full-time employees now. Um, yeah. What kind of marketing are you doing? I'm just kind of curious. Yeah, so I do cold email, mostly because uh, if you think about whether or not you should do cold email, if you're email, if you're B2C, 
no one's going to like if you email my personal email and it's a random I'm not opening it. But if you're a business, you might open it. Right. So I've been marketing to dance studios, fitness studios for our studio portion of the software. And that's been working really, really well. And it's very cheap to do. So if you're a B2B like um, and, and you'd like to explore it, I think that that's worked really well for us. And then attending in-person events um, in the competition space. So I actually attend dance competitions or the arm wrestling competition to like raise awareness. And then I figure if I'm there anyways, that's where I said, okay, well, I might as well compete um, and like train because then I can post it on Instagram. Do you People do that? Like do you do the following? Like, do you be like, hey, like I just knocked out my first day of jujitsu and like this is great and like kind of yeah, do like a progress to... exactly so I, I post my progress at these new sports and and like i wouldn't say i'm super athletic i rock climb like on my own oh cool uh so i'm not super weak but by no means am i an athlete <laughs> so, arm wrestling champion <laughs> yeah, no, no we'll see we'll see um but no it's more so uh people have enjoyed because they say it makes the sport feel more accessible people have really liked the instagram of just me posting myself trying out sports and and improving and getting advice and and it's been a very I was expecting so many negative comments and mm -hmm. it's been 95 percent positive so really well wow. yeah. um talk to me about because I was just thinking about this too um I used to do jiu-jitsu and what would happen is they'd have a trainer come in from like Brazil and then they'd be like hey we're having so-and-so come in like it's open mat with the trainer flying in and stuff. Um, I think that would be really ideal too for somebody that's, you know, just looking to to keep it more organized and systematized. Um, I'm just kind of thinking outside the box. Sorry. Yeah, uh, you mean I'm an like entrepreneur. From a, yeah, from a software perspective. Yeah, I was like, yeah. So our know. software does that. So you can we have like uh, you can have multi week sessions. So if you think about like an art class. If you show up on eight, week eight of an art class, you're going to be lost. Everyone mm -hmm. else will have a finished painting and you'll have a blank canvas. So we have those and then you can mix and match it with one-time workshops. Or if you're like a yoga studio and you just have drop-in sessions, memberships. So we have that um, already in there. So you could have like, yeah, open mat with so-and-so. Here's the price uh, for like a one-time session. That's I can see it, it for like a lot of like independents too. Like, or like a lot of startups for entrepreneurs. Yeah. Like yeah. somebody that's doing like a wine and paint kind yeah. of deal and they have like an event yeah. and uh, bookings so you can put in your availability so you can do private lessons if you're like a fitness coach all in one place it took us uh between myself and the the other main developer it took us about a year to build out the calendar from wow. scratch to get it to do all those stuff like all those things um simultaneously all those different types of bookings and and not have uh scheduling bugs although we do still have scheduling bugs so you know do you uh is it just yourself or do you have other programmers or yeah so there's myself and then there's the other developer who owns 49 percent of the company his name's dan cool and then we have three full-time employees wow yeah all so development where do you kind of see your company in the next couple of years or I where do you want it to go if we could take take over ticketing as a whole, that'd be great. That's like the the grand vision because mm -hmm. I always like the idea, especially since the pandemic, people need human connection and events bring people together. Sports bring people together. All these ticketed things bring people together. So I would like to make it easy for everyone to kind of run stuff. If you have a dream or a passion or you want to run a wine night, you should be able to do it and it shouldn't cost a ton. So... Hopefully we can make that a reality. And if somebody wanted to get in touch with you, wanted to get more information, maybe wanted to talk to you about a bigger scale of it, where would they go? You'd go to eventus.ca. Um, so www.eventus.ca. Or you can reach out to us on Instagram. It's also eventus.ca on Instagram. Awesome. Well, I appreciate you coming in. Oh, thank you for I having me. I learned a me. lot. Yeah. That's really cool.